What's good, YouTube? My name is James, and this is my poker vlog. James is cracked. Do it all in. Times, kings, aces. Where did the flop go? Where did the flop? <laughs> So the original goal of this channel was to showcase some of the live poker games that I play in. I'm part of a New York City poker group where we host home games every weekend. The stakes are smaller than casino and underground games, uh, but there's no rake, so it's a really good place for new players that are just getting into the game to come play in. Unfortunately, this whole uh, COVID pandemic thing has put our games on hold, so for now I'm just going to showcase some of my uh, hands from the online micro stakes, which is not as exciting. Um, but when things get back to normal, I'll be sure to share all of my live action with all you guys. Uh, as you can probably guess, um, since the stakes are smaller, the games are way looser, uh, there's a ton of multi-way and all-in action. Uh, it's pretty common for players to sit 1,000 to 2,000 big blinds deep or more, uh, and it's also pretty standard for players to make a couple hundred bucks a night. So definitely really excited to share all that action with you once we get back to it. Uh, also. I will be running a mystery hand in every video where I will have you try to guess what my two cards are or what my opponent's cards are. Uh, simply leave your guess in the comments below. Make sure you are subscribed right here. And I will randomly pick a winner from the correct guesses to give out a cash prize. Um, it's not going to be anything substantial, but the goal is to increase the prize amount as my channel grows. So. Stay tuned and good luck to all of you. That's it for the semantics, so let's get right into the action. Alright, so for the first hand, we look down at Pocket Aces, the second best hand ever created in poker, right behind 7-2 offsuit. Bruh. And we have a min raise from under the gun. It folds to middle position. Who makes the call? And here, we're just going to 3-bet with our premium hand to 110. Folds back around to the under the gun razor who then calls and the middle position player calls as well so on the flop of four nine two two hearts we have the ace of hearts so prevents our opponent from having a lot of the good flush draws uh, regardless uh, three ways i think we can go for some value with our hand so it checks to us and we make a bet of 203 and we get called by the initial razor and middle position folds. Turn is the seven of hearts, which is a great card for us because we now have the nut flush draw to go along with our overpair. Um, so at this point, we're really putting our opponent on uh, weaker overpairs such as tens, jacks, maybe some queens, uh, and potentially some flush draws, although we do have the ace of hearts, like we said earlier. So it checks back to us, and now we can size down a little bit since I don't think uh, there's that many strong hands in our opponent's range. So we make it 315, and our opponent calls, and we hit Jen on the river with the six of hearts. So we now have the nut flush, and our opponent checks to us. So there's really only one thing to do here uh, with the nuts, and that's to jam. So we do, and our opponent calls, and they muck. So we'll scoop this one up. For the next hand, we pick up another premium with pocket kings in the small blind. So we have a min raise from first position and the cutoff calls. Then on to us, we're just going to 3-bet again with our premium. And here I think I make a slight mistake by only 3-betting uh, to 80. Uh, since we're out of position and there's also an overcaller, we probably should have sized up a little bit. Uh, maybe made it 110 or 120, but it is what it is. The big blind calls, initial razor calls, and the overcaller gets out of the way. So we flop the world here with top set. Um, there are flush draws available. There's some middling pocket pairs, potentially, uh, you know, not really many straight draws besides six, seven. Uh, either way, I think with all the draws out there, we can still get a good amount of value if we bet on the larger side. So we make it 150, which is probably a little too small, but it's all right and everyone just folds so a little bit sad about that one but happy to take it down for our third hand we are sitting under the gun 
and this is actually going to be the mystery hand for the video. So as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to keep my two whole cards hidden and try to have you guys guess what I'm holding. And uh, you can do that just by simply leaving a comment below with your guess. And if you get it right, uh, you're eligible to win a cash prize for this video. So uh, good luck to everyone. And let's get to the hand. So we open to 30 under the gun. It folds around to the cutoff who makes the call. And we go heads up to a flop of 342 rainbow. So for this hand, I'm going to be focusing more on my opponent's range rather than mine, uh, just so I don't give away too much information and you guys can you know, try to guess what I'm holding for the contest. So on this low board here, um, you know, an ace is, is a gut shot. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a good board to see bet with our uh, stronger range that we have con compared to our opponent. So we make a bet of 50 and we get called. On the turn, there's a two. So I don't think the two changes much. Um, our opponent shouldn't have too many twos in their range. So we shouldn't be that afraid of trips. Um, other than that, you know, everything on the flop pretty much carries over. So I think it's a good card to barrel on. And we do that and make a bet of 90. And our opponent calls again. So when our opponent calls the turn, um, I think, you know, their, their holdings are consists mostly of uh, some draws like 6-7, uh, maybe some club draws that decided to float us. And um, other than that, it's really just middling pocket pairs like pocket sixes, pocket sevens. So when the river comes an ace uh, of clubs, uh, the flush gets there, first of all. Um, but I think a lot of those middling pocket pairs we think our opponent might have, uh, they're probably afraid of this ace. So it might be tough to get value from those types of hands. In addition, if, if they did float us with an ace, uh, they now have top pair. So I think it's a good card for us to check on, which is what we do. And our opponent quickly checks it back and shows us pocket jacks, which we definitely did not expect. So our opponent is going to take this one down. For our next hand, we are sitting on the button with ace nine suited and playing five ways as some of the other players are away at the moment. So it folds to us and we open with our uh, suited ace. It's a pretty good hand. And we get called by the big blind. So we go heads up to the flop of six queen jack rainbow. Uh, all things considered, I think this is uh, definitely a good board for us. Um, it really hits our opening range. Uh, we have all the good pairs such as aces, kings, ace, queen, king, queen, um, even hands like ace, king that we have are, are good for this board. Uh, so I think it's a mandatory C bet. Uh, no need to go big here because our opponent could have a wide variety of holdings. So they check and we bet 25 and they make the call. So the turn's an ace, uh, which is a pretty good card because now we pick up some showdown value. And... Our opponent decides to lead into us for about half pot. Um, with this sizing, uh, I don't think their hand is that strong. And there's really no need to overplay our hand at the moment with a raise. So we just go with a call. And we get to the river. And the river is a four, which is a total brick. It uh, doesn't really change anything at all. So let's see what our opponent does. Uh, they check. And when they check here, I think their range is very capped. Uh, if they had a hand like Queen Jack or Ace Jack, which beats us, uh, I think they would have led on the river. Uh, but because they checked, I think their range is really capped to, you know, some queens, uh, maybe some pocket pairs like pocket nines, pocket eights. So we decide to go for some thin value and uh, bet 80. Uh, after some time, our opponent decides to fold. So we pick this one up. All right, for our last hand, we have a fun one. We are sitting in early position with pocket rockets again. So pretty easy spot to open it up. And uh, we suddenly realize that there's a dead 10 here in the middle. Um, for this hand, we were actually away from our computer and we ran back to quickly raise it uh, before the timer ran out. And we did not see this 10. So because of that, my raise size is a little too small. Uh, and then of course we get punished for that as we get a caller from the button small blind and big blind. So now we're going four ways to the flop with our aces, 
but all that doesn't matter because we book a one-way ticket to Burger King where we get things our way and flop quads. So yeah, we have a monster here and just gonna slow play this and check it back. Unfortunately, the action checks all the way through on the flop and brings us to the turn of a two. So I think the two is a pretty good card because if the opponents had um, some type of pair like pocket fours, pocket fives, pocket sixes, uh, the two isn't going to scare them away. They probably think their hand is best now because someone with you know trip aces would probably bet the flop. Uh, little do they know that I have both the aces, so I think they're in for a world of hurt. The player here decides to bet half pot, uh, which is pretty nice. So I don't think there's any need for us to raise just yet. We can just call to trap and keep try to keep these other two players in the hand. So we call, and the other two players fold. So now the river's a six, which is another low card, uh, which I think is good because if they had say pocket sevens, um, you know this is still a good board for them. And you know if they somehow spike to full house, then we're just gonna get all the money. So let's see what our opponent does. And they decide to bet 195, which is a pretty big bet. Um, either way, I think with our quads, uh, we should look to try to get value from some of those middling pocket pairs like pocket sevens. So I think doing something tricky here like a min raise would be good because if we min raise, all those middling pocket pairs should call because they have such a good price. And if they did somehow have a full house, um, they would 100% just jam all in and raise us. So then we can just call off and make them look dumb. Uh, Anyway, we go with that play with the min raise, and our opponent thinks for a little bit and then makes the call. Uh, we show them the bad news, and can you believe it? Quads win. That's it for this one. I'll be picking the mystery hand winner in the next video. So until then, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.